Hey there, fellows. Now, you might recall how recently we did a cool experiment where we cross-drilled some brake rotors, and hopefully you remember how that went. The results were actually not all that bad, and uh, I appreciate that everyone enjoyed it. Yeah, give me that. They've brought me what is left of that cross-drilled brake rotor. The hub has been cut out. That part we also got on film. And at the end of the day, we were quite surprised. We now know why they cross-drill rotors, how they work, and that they make braking more effective. But now we're curious to know what will happen if you drill holes in brake drums. That should be interesting. This one has already got holes in it. That's for the dust and debris to find its way out. Hot air and all of that. But that's not going to do it for us. After all, they're not on the... friction surface of this brake drum, which is this right here. But yeah, why don't we grab... This is a set of brake pads, a couple of drums. We also have a car. Let's try drilling these brake drums, shall we? We'll convert the front brakes of this car to drum type, go out and try them on the test track, and then start the drilling. Okay, well, let's see what comes out of this. Let's do this. We progressively drill holes in brake drums. What'll happen? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check this out, guys. We're looking pretty good here. Like I promised, we fitted the drums to the front, which required very minor modifications. It's all looking very good. As per usual, we're at the test track, our favorite lot. As we usually do around here, I'm gonna drive to the opposite end. We've got a nice little starting line over there. From there, I accelerate, pick up as much speed as I can. We've already placed some cones, and that's where I'll start braking. So let's head to the starting line. And I'll start by braking on fully stock a lot of brake drums that haven't been tampered with. Right, let's see what happens. Excellent. Well, here we go. Honestly, I haven't yet. Even... Touch the brakes on this. Don't know how they perform. 80. 90. Oh, the brakes worked great now, didn't they? What's the traction situation? Temperature reading, Sergey? 67, 68. Really? Why so underwhelming? 68 degrees, that's it? Did you notice that the wheels were locking up in turns? I don't get why it did that. It's supposed to be even. Even. They are drums. Yeah, I realize that they are. Okay, then. Now, even though they are aluminum, they do radiate quite a bit of heat. So where we applied some black paint, we're getting a much more accurate temperature reading. And so we're going to spray some paint onto the drums in order to get the exact temperature. These not being rotors, no pads are going to be removing the paint. So we should get a good understanding as to how hot they're going to be getting. I'll just get right up to 80. If I go any faster, I won't have enough room to stop. Shockingly. 70. That's 80. Right on the money. They were even coming close to locking. I had to let off slightly, then get back on to prevent them from locking up. Hey, at least I didn't stray into the field. That is very good. What do we got? 80. Over here it's 70. That's 80, this is 70. Well, I did let off ever so slightly. I let off and got back on. But we see that I've made it to the very end of the lot. We've got those tires over there. Right across from the B-pillar, it's all good. Okay. Shall we begin? No 
Okay, we've done the drilling. The holes are placed at an angle, everything is good. The rows are spaced about 55 millimeters away from each other. Looking good. Right assembly and test drive. Seventy. And eighty. It, it, it. What can I tell you? Honestly, as soon as I got on the brakes, I could feel they worked very well indeed. They did their job very well. Yeah, very good indeed. What's with the temperature? 81 and 74. 81 and 74? What's going on? It's not much of an increase. The temperature didn't change much at all. But the difference in performance... Yeah, I noticed. I stopped quite a bit sooner. I also felt the brakes immediately biting. Yeah, these are tremendous results. It appears that even a bit of drilling in these brake drums has noticeably improved this car's braking. Very nice. Okay, let's continue the drilling then. So check this out, we've drilled some more holes, and now let's install them and see how much better, or contrarily, how much worse they have become. Okay, fit them and head out. Sixty-seven. Eighty. Yeah, this time I was so close. I was right on the verge of... I was expecting the wheels to lock at any moment, but they did not. As for the result, I'd say it's about the same. That's right after we did that first round of drilling on these drums. 76 and the other one? 80. And 80. Same sort of heat. They haven't gotten any cooler. Effectiveness is about the same. The car stopped in pretty much the same spot. So what does that tell us? When we did just a few rows, that gave us a noticeable improvement over drums that weren't drilled. But once we added some more rows, I'm gonna be honest, in terms of pedal feel, well... I had to press down on it quite a bit harder. I had to use a lot more force to get the brakes to work decently. In the first case, when we didn't have as many holes, I didn't have to push down quite as hard as I did this time. This time I had to exert a bit more... It's not even a bit more, what am I saying? I had to exert much more force. That being said, the car did come to a stop, and though the friction surface area has decreased, they still work reasonably well. Okay, let's continue drilling holes. Let's carry on. Check this out, guys, we've driven back to base, and we did some drilling. In between the rows we already had, we made some more. You can see how many of them there are, and it's tough to say the exact amount. But as you can plainly see, there is a lot of them. Okay, let's see how the brakes perform with this many holes in the drums. And we're off. 60. 70. 70. I did lock the right wheel up, but it seems to have a tendency to do so. As you can see, the brakes are just as effective, and that's with a massive number of holes. But the car still comes to a stop very well. 
I was using as much force as before. I mean, not like the first time around. I had to push harder. But that's on drum brakes that have as many holes in them as a washing machine drum. But I say we don't stop there. Check out what we got here. We just went crazy with the drilling this time around. And this is now looking very much like a colander, or a washing machine drum. Anyway, let's go ahead. Yeah, these do not look much like brake drums now. They've got some serious ventilation going. But let's fit them to a car and uh, see how they perform. Let's do this. This is accelerating pretty fast. I'm at 80 k's. Why did they bite so suddenly? I don't get it, as soon as I touched the brakes, they were like... How much? 74. 74? Okay. 77. 77 or 76? Or thereabouts. 77. 77, right. I'd better do that again. Here we go. 80. Yeah, things have gotten worse. Like, noticeably worse. It peaked at 102. 102? Yes. Holy cow. But then they didn't fully cool, so that's a factor. You guys want to know what just happened? The brake pedal has sunk into the floor. I'm gonna go again. Or maybe I'm not. It won't move. What? It's not moving. Car doesn't want to move. I don't get it. Something seems to be very wrong. Looks like they were stuck. How did that happen? Alrighty then. Let's go again. 80 already. Ninety. Ninety-six? I mean, the brakes were doing something, but they weren't... Uh, the tires were doing... Uh, clawing at the pavement, but this time pedal feedback was very lacking, because... I was pressing down on it with pretty much all of my strength. 98? What about the other one? It had to have been 100, but it's showing 99. Yeah, it definitely got up to 100. The pedal went straight to the floor. Yeah, the brakes on this, they're gone. Everything looks alright, but the pedal was on the floor. No brake fluid leaks. What seems to be the issue? I am quite curious. Show us what's wrong. Everything looks okay, weirdly enough. Okay, guys, here's the reason why I couldn't set off after that one stop I did. Look at this. See what has happened? This has been... We might have made one too many holes. It got snagged. <laughs> and not just that. Look at what else has happened. This is just... terrific. This is scrap metal at this point. Take a look at that. The inner lining, which is what the pad rubs against, it has... 
I don't even know what to say here. It has come undone. It has detached from the aluminum. And I'm just holding it in my hand. If it's the same story with the other one, wouldn't that be a shame? No, this one is intact. Like you were saying, which one is which? Drunk in a ditch. And as per usual, let's do a recap. On the stock drums I had to use up the entire lot from the 80 km an hour entry point, and after the first round of drilling, honestly, that made the brakes much more effective. You saw the decrease in stopping distance? It was like about 3 or 4 meters. You could really feel that the car's braking had become much better. And when we drilled even more holes, well, the first time nothing really changed. Aside from me having to press the pedal with quite a bit more force. When we added even more holes, that's when things began to deteriorate. I was pushing down even harder, though the car was decelerating and ultimately came to a stop. Okay, you requested we try this and we did. We all saw how it worked out. You be the judges. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.